Hey guys, this is DJ Thomas White, and I'm coming at you with another edition of the Natural Rhythm Equipment Show. Today we're going to revisit the classic OP1 by Teenage Engineering. I've had a lot of videos and a lot of tutorials about this device, and you guys know it's sort of my guitar. But we're going to go back and do a new Making the Track video and show off some of the features of the brand new operating system that came out a couple months ago and see what it's capable of. Let's get started. So that's just a little piece of a hip hop track that I was working on last week. And uh, I figured today, instead of doing a typical house beat, we'd probably keep the hip hop theme and try and do a making a track with a slower BPM. So let's go ahead and advance the tape track forward by pushing shift and arrow. We're gonna set a new loop point by pressing in, and we'll set this to be two bars to start with. So we've got nothing there. We'll go back uh, and take a look at our levels. Make sure these are all I like to start with them right around 80 to give me a little bit of room either way. Let's take a look at what the compression is. I have it at 150 release, 35 drive. I'm gonna drop that to 30 for the drive. No effects on and EQ is neutral. So to start with, we're gonna to go to a drum bank. We've got Okay, before we tune those samples, we need to get a basic beat going. So let me go to, to three. See what we got here on three. Okay, let me load up a different drum kit. We'll go to drum. We'll go with all of here. So we'll go back to pattern. We'll program in a basic beat. Like the tighter kick. I'm going to take out that other hit there. Maybe we'll put this on the upbeat. Or the... And what we'll do is we'll go back here. We're going to drop the volume of that a little bit by holding shift and turning the red knob. Drop that a little bit lower. Okay, so that's a one bar loop. So we're going to go to our tape track and go track one. We're going to record one bar of this. And we're going to go make some changes to that pattern to create a change up for the second bar and record that in a sec. So we'll do the first bar. Here we go. Hold record, press the key to start the sequence. Okay, and we'll go here, place the tape head, and we'll go back here and we'll add some changes. Put in an extra kick. Some additional hats. Don't like all those additional hats. We'll take this one out. Okay, that sounds great. Let's go back to the tape. 
make sure the cursor is in the right place, and we're going to record this second bar into our loop. Okay, now we can go back, clear this sequence by holding shift and turning the blue knob. We're going to go back to our jazz pattern, bring pattern sequencer back open. Now we can go back and place those samples. Let's see how this lines up. So we go with the tape. And we'll turn the red knob to start the sequence at the right time. What I'm doing here is I'm going to fine tune the start point. By holding shift and turning the green knob. Because we have kind of a lot of percussion in the sample, I'm going to try and keep the essence of it by turning the filter on, but eliminating those hats that are causing us some grief here. For this, I'm going to use nitro. adjust the start point here so it swings appropriately with this beat. Okay, so we can stop that from playing in the pattern sequencer. We're going to go back to the tape and we're going to record this to track two with full volume because it's lower than the drums. We need to boost that up a little bit. Now what you may notice is it's still not loud enough. So my option is I can go back here to, this, to the drum uh, bank and on that sample, which is still selected because it's the only sequence playing, I can hold shift and then I can adjust the gain. So now when I go back to tape, we'll play this like this. So I'm just gonna press both buttons at the same time. And I'm noticing that it's got a little too much bottom end, so I'm going to pull some of that out with nitro. Okay, that's probably good there. So now we can try and record this. Okay, so 
let's find another sample or two to layer with this. We'll clear out the pattern sequencer, get back to tape, and uh, make sure that's off. Back to tape, and we can play this. <laughs> So with this one, I'll just play it in. this too. But if I hold record and then press play here, it's going to start the sequence playing. So what I'm doing there is I'm trying to find a sample that will actually sound good right towards the end. Okay, so on four, I'm going to record this. So with four soloed, I can find where the beginning of that is, split it, remove the rest of this by lifting it out. Now what that allows me to do is have a visual reference to go up here to, to three, cut that, lift out the piece I don't want. I'm also going to do this with two, cut it, lift out the piece I don't want. Now when I play it back, you get this. Take the beat out here. So I'm not super.
super happy with the drum beat. So let's go back, we'll lift that out, and we'll pop a new one in there and uh, make it a bit louder this time. So we'll go back to bank three. Timing's a little bit off on this, so let me do this. Well, that'll work there, so let's get that in there. This one, because I need it on every other beat, every other... Uh, 16th. I'm going to program that in manually. I think I'm going to take this note out here. needs to come down in volume a little bit. Turn this off. Still too loud. This one's a little loud now here, so we'll turn this down. We'll go back here, we're going to take a look at the volume of this snare and see if we can boost it and crunch it. Maybe we do the same with the kick. Reverse this, what it ends up sounding like. Our reverse, beat, reverse beats might be cool, so let's drop. Uh, whoops.
like that either. Turn the volume all the way up on one. Sounds okay, but the knock sound I added doesn't really go with the tune, so let's take that out. Just lift this out and record it again. So now we can shift and lift this whole section, paste it back down by dropping it paste it in the next section, and what we're going to do here is just go to the end of the section by holding shift and the arrow to navigate there, press the out button, now we have a four bar measure. But what we're going to do is go back, lift out this piece here, and we'll go program some additional beats. Now we'll drop this this uh, in. Whoops, make sure it's on here. Now we'll drop this one in. So because we have this extra space at the end, we can make this even more complicated by lifting that out, going back here and programming even some more stuff. We'll add some snare fills or something. Okay. Okay, so now we go back, make sure our cursor's in the right, our tape head's in the right place, and we can record this final measure in. So now one thing I'd like to do is mute the drum sound, and all the rest of the sounds are going to play. So what we're going to do is we're going to play that and then we're going to go press calm to go to the album. What we're going to do in the album is we're going to record this so we can resample it back. And I'll typically let this play a couple times because the process of sampling this back to a drum kit is a bit takes a bit of uh, timing, so this gives us a little bit of extra leeway. Okay, so now, go back to the drum sampler. Okay, let's use 8. So let's go to microphone, but we're going to change that to the ear, because that will sample from the internal audio engine. So we're going to go back to Calm, we're going to start playing this. Back to the drum sampler, press record. I can 
could stop the stop the album from playing back. And now if we go back to this drum sample bank, we actually have So this technique of putting everything on the album, merging it to a new sample bank is a great way to get more out of the OP1 than four tracks because we just use three tracks of multi-layered samples to create essentially one new sound that we can re-record back to the tape. So if I set this up, let's make sure we get the start point just right. So now that we have that set up as the loop, we can actually go back, set this to record like this. Let's go to our tape, go to track two. We're gonna lift everything out on track two. We're gonna go to track three and do exactly the same thing. Then we'll do the same for track four. So we all we have left is the beat track, which is muted. because I have it set to end, you gotta be careful how many times you press it. But what we can do to get around that is turn that off. And um, if you wanna get um, a little bit more creative with this, you can actually program it as a sequence in Endless. So we'll hold Shift, we'll program just this one note. But for 32 beats of 16, come back and now we've got Adjust the start point just a little bit. So it just then as an example to show you how you can use that. But the other advantage of merging all of those processed and laid down to tape tracks to the album and pulling them back into a sample engine is you can actually now on this track assign more effects. So we can go to shift and effects engine. So if we were to want to do the cow effect. So let's lay this down. Now that we've got it sounding like that, let's test the levels real quick. Because we have it programmed in Endless, it loops around perfectly so we don't have to worry about hitting this again. You can program this to be on 16 or 8 or 4 if you want to have it repeat earlier or you can do a combination of different repeats throughout your endless sequence um, as your song requires. So let's record this one in. <laughs> We can leave it like that, but I want to show you another example of something that you can do that will help you get more complex patterns within the OP. So we want to lift that out. We're going to do the same thing that we did, but as we're recording it, we're going to go back to the drum sample bank and bring up the effect so we can start affecting that and be recording those changes that we're making live. So I'm going to turn the loop endpoint off which will allow us to let this record past the end of the loop so we don't have to worry about maybe over recording anything that's coming after. We don't have anything in this arrangement that comes after, but it's a good best practice so that you don't end up accidentally overriding your work in other arrangements. <laughs> Okay, so we went a little bit over, as I said, so we're gonna cut that out. Now all we have to do is drop the loop point back in and we've got our four bar um, 
four bar loop back. Let's hear how it sounds. <laughs> So I kind of like the first half of it better where it starts to modulate a little bit. So I'm going to do this. I'm just going to cut it right in the middle, lift it up, and then I'm going to drop it back in twice. Okay, so now let's look at one of the new features of this OP1 uh, operating system. Instead of going to any of the traditional sequencers down here, we're actually going to go to Arpeggio. And what Arpeggio allows us to do is create an arpeggiation, which is a sequence of notes in time with the music. Uh, at this point, we'll leave it at 16th, and let's just play around with this, because what I want to try and get is a sort of a walking bass line with this um, FM uh, engine tone. <laughs> So that sounds like it's going to work okay for our bass line. So we'll go to track three. It sounds like there's some reverb on there. I probably want to take that off. Let's see. I'll make sure I'm not clipping as I record this. So let's go to three, hold record, and start the arpeggiation. <laughs>
now, I'm no vocalist or lyricist, but if you were working with somebody, you wanted to record some vocals, well, all you would need to do is go to an empty track, or you can even overdub this over another track. You're gonna hold the microphone to activate, but what you didn't see a second ago is I went and I turned on the selection to microphone, boosted the gain up. Now we can go back and we can lay over some vocals. So now let's go back and lay over some vocals. We're coming through. We're coming through. Wise it and we know what to do. We're coming through. Wise it and we know what to do. We're coming through. Wise it and we know what to do. We gotta move. Oh, but we got nothing to prove. We're coming through. We're coming through. We're coming through. We gotta move. We're coming through. We're coming through. We're coming through. We're coming through. Okay, so you can hear the vocal volume is a little bit lower than we'd like it to be. So what we're going to do is we're going to go and record on album. We're going to solo track four by holding it. Through. Why is it and we know what to do? We're, we're coming through. through. Why is it and we know what to do? We're, we're coming, coming through. through. Why is it and we know what to do? We we're gotta coming move. through. Oh, but we got nothing to prove. We're, we're coming, coming through. through. Why is it and we know what to do? We're, we're coming, coming through. through. Why is it and we know what to do? We're, we're coming, coming through. through. Why is it and we know what to do? We're, we're coming 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 through. Through. Oh, but we got nothing to prove. We're, we're coming through. Why is it and we know what to do? We're coming through. Okay, so now we can play that back. We're gonna go record it to the same place we recorded our loop before. Now we'll be on drum bank six. We're gonna play the album and we're gonna come back and record this. But before we do that, let's go select where we're recording from, which is the ear, so we're recording the output of the machine. Album. So we're gonna record on album. Play. We're gonna solo track four by holding it. Through. Why is it and we know what to do? We're, we're coming through. through. Why is it and we know what to do? We're, we're coming, coming through. through. Why is it and we know what to do? We, we gotta move. Through. Oh, but we got nothing to prove. We're, we're coming, coming through. through. Why is it and we know what to do? We're, we're coming, coming through. through. Why is it and we know what to do? We're, we're coming, coming through. through. Why is it and we know what to do? We, we gotta move. Through. Oh, but we got nothing to prove. We're, we're coming through. Okay, so got that taken care of. We the album will stop on its own. But let's go back to the drum bank. We'd go to the beginning here. We're going to boost the gain up of this specific uh, specific vocal. So it looks like there's our three pieces. Prove it coming through. Prove it coming through. Prove it coming through. Prove it coming through. We're 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 coming through. Why is it and we know what to do? We're coming through. Why is it and we know what to do? We're coming through. Why is it and we know what to do? We're coming through. Why is it and we know what? We're coming through. Why is it and we know what to do? We're coming through. Why? We're coming through. Why is it and we know what to do? We're coming through. We're coming through. Why is it and we know what to do? We're coming through. Why is it and we know what to do? We're coming through. Why is it and we know what? We're coming through. We're coming through. Why is it and we know what to do? So we'll go back here and we'll do this on this, get this uh, to be the second cluster of voices. Our level on the first one was plus eight. So let's, let me actually show you something else. So again, hold this key, We're coming through. lift, Why is it? hold We're this key, through. press drop, know this key, press do. drop. And now that copies this key to the other keys. We're, 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 so it has the same gain setting. We just need to adjust the start time. We're, we're, we know do. We're coming through. 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 Why is it and we know what to do? We're coming through. We're coming. We're coming through. Why is it and we know what? We're coming through. Why is it and we know what to do? We're coming through. Why is it and we know what to do? We're coming through. We're coming through. We're coming through. Okay. Now we can go back to our track, lift out the vocal where we recorded our mic into the OP1, play the pattern and see what we got. We're coming through. We're coming through. We're coming. We're coming. We're coming. We're coming. We're coming. We're coming through. We're coming. 
So there's a bit of a longer winded demo about how to work on uh, a hip hop beat in different ways using samples within, using the arpeggio, using rendering things to recording things to albums so you can group things, resample them, and get that chain going where you can use the OP1 in a deeper way than it uh, has just at face value. Learning these tools, other tools like that, are really what will help you get the most out of this device. Uh, and that's a great example of limitation forcing innovation. And it also means that this device is much more than it seems. So Teenage Engineering OP1, five years old now, six years old, I can't even remember. It's a part of my everyday workflow. It's something I use all the time. I am super excited Teenage Engineering keeps releasing uh, updates for this, and I'll have another video showing more specifically uh, one specific feature of the new OS, the Tremolo LFO and how that's been enhanced. So take a look for that. This is Thomas White for the Natural Rhythm Engineer. Uh, this is Thomas White for the Natural Rhythm Equipment Show, and we'll catch you in the next episode. We're coming through. 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 Why is it and we know what to do? We're coming through. Why is it and we know what to do? We're coming through. Why is it and we know what to do? We're coming. We're coming. We're coming. We're coming. We're coming.